country yeah. joins us tonight. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Carly Fiorina. All right, Carly, Carly, Carly. Hello, Waukesha. How are you guys? Fantastic. Thank you for coming out to support Ted Cruz tonight. Okay. I've been in Wisconsin about a week now. I had a brief little detour to North Dakota. They had a convention up there. I love Wisconsin. I've done the squeaky cheese curds thing. But honestly, snow? Yeah. I was not prepared for that. I have come to appreciate this state and the people of Wisconsin so much. Not just because you stood with your brave governor and got real reforms done and showed the rest of the country what real activism and conservatism is all about. But because it's just been a delight to be here all week. I so appreciate your governor who I've had the opportunity to travel around on the cruise bus with for the last several days. I so appreciate your state senator. And I have to tell you, I so appreciate Charlie Sykes. <laughs> You know, because he did his job. Yeah. And Vicki McKenna did her job. They did their job. And I think Charlie is absolutely right in what he said to you a couple moments ago. The people of Wisconsin have an incredible opportunity to show the rest of the nation how it's done. To show the rest of the nation what real conservative activists know about the state of this nation and who is the leader who can bring our nation to a better place. So I want you to send a really long, loud and strong message tomorrow. And if you needed any more motivation to do that, I want to tell you about something I read in the newspaper this morning. I read, here's a test, where do you think more expensive wine is consumed than anywhere else in the nation? You got it, sir. Washington, D.C. Here's another thing I read. You know, I was a chief executive in Silicon Valley for many, many years. And Silicon Valley, there are all these tech founders, you know, they're billionaires. Silicon Valley has been for a long time the wealthiest area in the United States. They're number two now. <laughs> Guess who's number one? Washington. You see what's been going on, folks? You know this. The majority of Americans know this. What's been going on for way too long is our government is getting more and more powerful, bigger and bigger, more incompetent, more corrupt. We got a system now where there's so much economic power concentrated in the hands of so few and so much political power concentrated in the hands of so few. That system, that system works if you're a big company, but it doesn't work if you're a little company. It works if you're powerful and wealthy and well-connected, but it doesn't work if you're just an American. The system is rigged, folks, and you've figured it out. And that is why that system has to be challenged in a serious way. Now, let me tell you something about Donald Trump. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I know people who have voted for Donald Trump, but I know people who think they're going to vote for Donald Trump. And I like those people, and I respect those people. And those people think they're voting for Donald Trump because they believe he will challenge the system. Yeah, that's right. Because they believe that he is an outsider. Folks, Donald Trump isn't going to challenge the system. That's right. He is the system. Yeah. He is the system. Trump are two sides of the same coin. Hillary Clinton has made her millions. Let's face it, she has made her millions, her hundred million to be exact, selling influence and access from inside the system. And Donald Trump has made his billions buying people like Hillary Clinton off. 
right. He isn't going to challenge the system. He isn't going to change the system. He is going to protect the system, preserve the system, take advantage of the system. That's it is right. what he has done all his life. Right. So it's not just important for you all to go out and vote tomorrow. It's important for you to talk to the people you work with and worship with, your neighbors, your friends, your family members. And when they say, well, I think I'm voting for Trump, tell them. The system isn't working anymore for us. The system is rigged. That's not the guy who's going to challenge the system. The guy who's going to challenge the system is a real constitutional conservative. Now, you know, in college, you know, I'm traveling around with all these brilliant lawyers, you know, Ted Cruz, Harvard Law, and Mike Lee, and I was a history and philosophy major in college, okay? So here's the thing that I know from studying history and philosophy. Here's the thing our founders knew. Human nature doesn't change that much. Circumstances change, but human nature doesn't. People, people everywhere, regardless of their circumstances, are looking to live a life of dignity and purpose and meaning. But it is also true that when you concentrate too much power in the hands of too few, that power is always abused. Yeah. And so our Constitution was written to put forward what was at the time a radical idea, actually. It's a visionary idea still. It was a radical idea that said each individual life is gifted by God and filled with possibility. Yeah. Individuals have rights, inalienable rights, to find and use their God-given gifts. Our founders talked about it as the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And our founders, in what was a radical departure from history, said those rights come from God and cannot be taken away by man or by woman. side of our Constitution is, if you read it carefully as I know you have, the Constitution guards against the concentration of power. That's right. And it is why a constitutional conservative is so important in the White House, because a constitutional conservative knows that unless and until we disperse money and power outside of Washington, D.C. and restore it to the citizens of this nation, the communities of this nation, the states of this nation, we will never fix what ails us. Right. You know, I have had the great privilege of living, traveling, working all over the world for decades. I have done business work, I've done charitable work, I've done policy work. And I can say to you with absolute certainty that it is only in this nation that a young woman can start the way I did, typing, filing, answering the phones for a nine-person real estate firm in the middle of a deep recession, go on one day to become the chief executive of what we turned into the largest technology company in the world and run for the presidency of the United States. That is only possible in this nation. And yet, and yet we have come to a point in our nation's history where too many Americans feel as though those possibilities are no longer real for them. We have record numbers of men who are not working. We have record numbers of women who are living in poverty. We have record numbers of young people who don't know that the American dream applies to them. And so I ran for office because I know to restore possibilities to every American, regardless of their circumstances, will require a constitutional conservative and someone who has the courage to challenge the status quo right. and the system. Right. So you know how I got here? I'll tell you how I got here. After I suspended my campaign, there was no path for me forward. And the, the duty of someone who loves their country and who is a good conservative is to get behind someone who has a path. Kasich, get the memo. <laughs> In any event, I got here. I got here because before I ever had a conversation with Ted Cruz about endorsing him, 
I had to go vote in my home state of Virginia. So my husband and I went to the voting booth and my husband Frank and I have been together for almost 35 years and as we're walking into the voting booth, as we're walking into the voting booth, he says to me, honey, I'm voting for you. You know, because he's my husband and he loves me. And I get in the voting booth and I see that presidential ballot and I see my name on the ballot. I mean, that was kind of a thrill. And I have to tell you the truth, I kind of paused. And I thought about all my supporters and I thought, no, no, the stakes are too high. I ran because we need a constitutional conservative. I ran because we need someone who's going to challenge the system. And I checked the box for Ted Cruz. And then and only then did I have a conversation with him about endorsing. This isn't about some deal. This is about what's right for our nation. Now you're going to have a lot of, how do we, look, we know he's a constitutional conservative. How do we know that? Because he's fought for the Constitution over and over again in front of the Supreme Court, and he's won over and over and over again. Whether it was our right to bear arms, or our right to religious liberty, or our right to say one nation under God. He has fought and won. You know, Dr. Ben Carson, a man I've known many years, I know and admire him, and he said something interesting when he endorsed Donald Trump. <laughs> He said that, well, you know, he's a different man in private than in public. Well, I want to tell you, that worries me a lot. You know why? Because most of the decisions that a president's going to make that are important are going to be made in private. We're not going to be there. And so we better know the values and the principles that guide their decision making. We know what will guide Ted Cruz's decision making. So I know. I know with absolute confidence that when the Supreme Court hangs in the balance, Ted Cruz isn't going to go make a deal with the Democrats. Ted Cruz is going to nominate a solid constitutional conservative. Here's something else I know. You know, people have said, well, Ted Cruz has made some enemies. Let me tell you something. The only way you get from secretary to CEO is to challenge the system. You know? So I've done that all my life. And when you challenge the system, when you challenge the status quo and the powers that be, guess what? You do more than ruffle feathers. You do more than rock the boat. You do more than break glass. You make some enemies, so I'm proud of the enemies that Ted Cruz has made because they are a demonstration to me that he is a fearless fighter, that he will fight for us, and he will indeed challenge this system. So people of Waukesha, people of Wisconsin, tomorrow you have an opportunity to lead the nation. You have an opportunity to stand up and say no. As Republicans, as conservatives, we know we need a principled, conservative, fearless fighter to be our nominee, to go on and beat Hillary Clinton in November. So I want you to show the rest of the nation how it's done, and you elect Ted Cruz tomorrow. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.